everyone, my name is Dr. Weez and uh, I'm a South African overclocker. So for this video, I'm going to take this uh, very beautiful Galax um, 1060 GTX Hall of Fame edition and uh, strip it down and, and prepare it for liquid nitrogen. So yeah, it's really straightforward. The, uh, the first thing we've got to do is just identify which screws to take out and then carefully unscrew everything, keep everything for safekeeping and go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the view to the workbench where you should be able to see what I'm up to. So the reason why we are stripping this cart down is because we're going to be using it. Um, I've been cooled by liquid nitrogen. So obviously we have to remove all the stock um, heat sinks and fans and all that stuff. We've got to insulate it for some moisture co uh, control and um, yeah, obviously then also to slap on the the GPU pots. Uh, the reason for the, all this is for the um, current competition that's been run on HW bots, and that is the uh, GOC 2016 online qualifiers. Uh, if you've been living in a hole every year for the last couple of years, uh, Galax have hosted a um, an, a competition. Uh, where the best overclockers that qualify online go to China to compete in the grand finals. Right, so basically what I've done is I've removed four screws in the back plate. So if you can see, there's four there on the GPU and then there's two on the VRM heatsink. And once that's done, it should just then fold away. Always when removing the stock heatsink and fan, be a bit careful because you never really know exactly where everything is connected. So on this um, card, you can pretty much see that we've got the LEDs at the top that have been connected with this on the header and then the fan header. So you can go ahead and unplug those and then the fan should separate really nicely from, from that. So we'll put that one side and first thing we'll do is go ahead and clean off the thermal paste so we don't make a big mess everywhere. All right. So that's the the first step. The next thing we've got to do is identify all the other things that need to come off. So on the 1060 Hall of Fame, uh, if you have a look at the back here, uh, I'm just trying to have a look in the camera. So if you have a look in the back here, it's got a little LED panel that, that lights up and um, it's quite a nice display. Obviously, well not obviously, but that's useless for overclocking. So we'll go ahead and unplug that. And then we'll undo the two screws and that just drops that out quite nicely. So the method I use for insulating um, is the Vaseline method. method. I am a huge fan of it purely because of the ease of application and the ease of uh, cleanup thereafter. So that's the little LED panel that uh, I was telling you about. Right, so the next thing we're going to have a look at is the, um, the heat sinks for the memory modules. So I'm not quite sure if it is advisable to to run it with the heatsink on or without the heatsink on. So for my first run, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove it because I want to remove the back plate. Um, and then I'll run and see sort of what sort of behavior I get in the benchmarks and if the memory needs to be um, dealt with at all. It's always a bit of a gamble. This is the um, first time I'm testing a 10 series card and also the first time testing this particular card. All right, so once we've got those screws removed, that should pop up, and it does. Remember, one of the more important things to always remember when stripping or, or um, building a PC is nothing ever has to be forced. Everything should always just you know, pop off or slide off uh, with a minimal amount of force. If you find that you've got resistance somewhere, it's quite possible that you've missed the screw. So, for instance, right there, I went and I was just feeling, and I was like, oh, there's quite a bit of resistance left there. And the reason for that is because I've missed the two screws at the back. So, once that is done, and that I need a smaller screwdriver for. So, here we go. A bit sneaky. They've used a much smaller head on that screw. Okay, so once that's done, I should lift up and there's, there's our back plate. So there's the naked card. 
if you're wanting to have a look at the back of the card all right really nice pretty and the front of the card all right so we've got our vrms behind this heat sink here and that should pop off there you can see all the vrms and uh, it's quite a pretty card nice white pcb and then the six gig of uh, of memory all right so if you have a look on the pcb you'll notice that there's two empty memory slots here that's obviously for uh, I say obviously quite a bit, and that must be for a 8 gig version of of uh, the car that uses a similar PCB layout. All right, so we go ahead and just place that down, making sure you don't lose any parts or screws, and uh, we screw all that back together and put it into the box. Okay, so now onto the exciting part, which is the insulation for moisture control, uh, and as I said, the method I use is the Vaseline method, uh, really straightforward. All you need to do is get two pieces of paper towel, and that's just because it gets messy. Place it on some paper towel. Get your favorite paintbrush, your favorite uh, petroleum jelly or Vaseline, whatever you want to call it, and uh, slap it on without fear or prejudice. All right, so I always like to make sure that I get a healthy amount onto the VRMs because that's current in uh, getting it in between and making sure we get a nice even coat. We do use a hair dryer and just get it, make sure that it sinks down in uh, the memory modules and then anywhere else that there is electronics. You want to try and just make sure that you keep it off the gold fingers uh, because the Vaseline does leave a bit of a res residue. Um, sometimes you'll notice that you're not getting your maximum clocks and that's because it's not making great contact. All right, so just get it in everywhere once you've done the front. All right, once you've done the front, you can flip it over and uh, give the back the same treatment. All right, so I don't cover the full card. I go back as far as about um, three quarters of the board, and that's purely because the cold does not travel and the moisture does not travel the full length. Uh, it is risky. Um, some people would just rather do the whole, whole card, but I'll run it and then see how the condensation looks and where it's ending and where it's starting and... Uh, really make a judgment call, but generally speaking, three quarters is more than enough. Uh, you very seldom nowadays see it going all the way. And uh, yeah, that in a nutshell is stripping of the video card and preparing it for liquid nitrogen. The next step is really to just heat it with a hairdryer, let some of that uh, Vaseline seep into those uh, hard to reach nooks and crannies, and then vas um, thermal paste and get ready to run. Right, so guys, um, I'd like to say thanks for tuning into my channel. Um, I do try and stream live on uh, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook twice a week. So do subscribe to my various platforms if you want to get notification of when I go live. And uh, yeah, until next time, happy benching. Cheers.